A law. Uh, let's see. Just a sec. There we go. That should work, I think. Probably. Um, can you guys see something? Probably, right? Let's see. Mm. Ah, can you guys see something? Работает. Хорошо. Привет. Hey guys, nice to be back. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> nice. Um, let's see. How's everyone doing? Let's see. Let me let me join. The fun. Uh, hey, yo. So, is is the is the uh like the sound quality? Is it good? Is it? Am I not too far away from the mic? It's good. Nice, nice, nice. Pretty, pretty good. Good, actually, yeah. So, uh, let's see how I can I turn this off. There we go. Хорошо. He brings us <laughs> manuscripts. Perfect. So, um, documents. That's it. Documents. Yeah. Uh, so basically. Uh, today it's it, it's not going to be as long simply because last time I talked like way too long it was like an hour and forty minutes something like that so I'm trying to do it a little bit more concise um, to keep it a bit more engaging I also actually prepared something so it's not that I don't know what like what the text reads I read it beforehand I asked for some help just quite a little so quite a few things that I don't understand but uh, at least I'll have some kind of uh, <laughs> I'll know what the text is about, right? So let's go over this. Uh, let me open this. Da, 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 da. Perfect. So this is the stuff that we covered last time. Um, that would be Azbuki, right? Azbuki, Viedia, Glagol, Dabro, Yest. This is the next one. That we're gonna cover. So let's dive straight into it. I think that's the best thing we could possibly do. Um, so same thing as before, basically. So this person um, looks like a, a, a ye, right? This sound, uh, this is the letter ye. And the interesting thing is that the letter yo uh, didn't exist. So the sound yo only started developing around this time. So there's no letter to represent the sound yo. Uh, which um, makes for some quite, you know, sometimes quite uh, a funny text. If I can put it like a yeast. Yeah, so this this letter, if I remember correctly, was called yeast, which means I am, or he is, or they are. Basically, all of the declinations, yeast. Um, but specifically, it means he is, she is, it is, right? So we have ye, uh, the different forms. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or the Latin cursive forms, because uh, as you might remember from last time, this is actually comes from Polish. So these are the Polish cursive ones. And this is where, uh, <laughs> where the fun starts. So basically, uh, if you can remember, Old East Slavic or early modern Russian still borrowed a lot of words from Greek. Uh, there's actually a ton of Greek words that were still used uh, during this period. So out of all of these words, that you can see right here, uh, there are seven of them. Uh, two of them are Slavic and the other ones are actually Greek. So this one is Greek and that one and that one. So, so let's dive into this. So the first one, if we take a look at this, this is a book. Uh, actually, do we have Russian natives in the chat? We probably have. 
I hope we have one because it's going to be useful. So this book, um, this is Evangelia, right? So what is that? Evangelia is the gospel. There's four gospels in Christian theology. And uh, the word Evangelia itself was adopted and came from Greek and was adopted by the Slavs. And as you can see, it uses a weird letter that doesn't exist in Russian anymore. This is the Ijitsa. And this letter also doesn't exist anymore. This E with two dots. So basically, what does it mean? Well, from Greek, exactly. So it comes from Greek and it comes from Evangelion uh, in ancient Greek. And in ancient Greek, it actually means good message. Evangelion, exactly, like the anime, right? So it um, means good message or in a different form. It actually means the bringer of good message or of, of something positive, right? So um, it was adopted, basically copied. It wasn't even translated. It was simply adopted. Yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, it was adopted and became the standard word. So sometimes what happened was that the Russians or the Slavs would translate it first. This is called a calc. And um, afterwards, or sometimes basically the Greek word itself got copied. And that's an Evangelian uh, reference, yeah. <laughs> so that's the first one. Uh, we can see the titlo up top um, with, this, uh, with the G, which means Evangelia, right? Then we have the other one, this picture right here. This is a Yele. And this is also not Slavic. So if you pay attention, like this it comes from religion, right? This object also comes from religion, this one as well, which means that pretty much all words related to religion come from Greek. And this is pretty logical as the Byzantine Empire, or the Roman Empire, if you want to call it like that, basically introduced Christianity to the Slavs, at least the Eastern Slavs. Western Slavs um, came in contact with Christianity, right? Due to um, the Pope, Papal States and, and Frankish Empire. So basically, yele, uh, and this also comes from Greek, and this comes from the Greek word a lion, which means olive oil or oily substance, but it doesn't mean that in Old Slavic. It actually means chrism or consecrated oil. So this is the oil that they actually used in different sermons, uh, religion sermons, and it was simply adopted. And another word that was adopted was this one, and that is uh, enitrahil. Uh, oh, epitrahil, epitrahil, and that comes from Greek as well, from ancient Greek, actually from Byzantine Greek, and that's from epitrahelion, and that means on the neck, simply because this garment, if you can put it like that, this piece of clothing was actually worn around the neck, we'll put it like this, and this is still being used, and it's a vestment, basically, um, that priests and bishops uh, use in the Orthodox Church. So in the Catholic Church, the Western Church, Roman Catholic Church, um, they don't use this stuff. And it's also not called uh, Epitrachil or Epitrachian. It's basically called an alb, alb or a stole. It also looks different. It's a different color, uh, less gold usually. Um, so let me zoom out. So we have Evangelia, Elei, uh, Epitrahil. Next one, let's take this one. And that is Yedinarog, right? And this is basically the same in Russian nowadays. So Yedina, meaning only or one or uni. Uh, and Rog or Rog uh, means horn. So this is only horn or unicorn, <laughs> basically the same thing. So a unicorn, a Slavic word, um, they didn't borrow the Greek one. And uh, we go on to the next one. This word changed in modern Russian. So the book, the primer, actually uses a more conservative form. So it uses yelin, which uh, if you speak another Slavic language, that's not East Slavic, you'll probably recognize it. Like yelin, um, it means like a deer. And in modern Russian, contemporary Russian, this is called Aleni, I believe. So the Y sound changed and became an O sound. And then we have this one, this person, should I say, this picture. And this is written in, in a kind of an interesting way. So we have a Y, 
And then we have th, the Greek th, which was copied into Russian as well. And we have e, omega, p, yer. Only horn sounds more cool than your actually it does, right? So this was read or as Ethiop. So Ethiop, if you want to pronounce it more archaic. Because the th sound didn't exist in Slavic, so it got copied as either a th, like Fyodor, like Theodore, right? Or a t sound, like Theater, which became Theater in Russian, modern Russian at least. So this is an Ethiopian. And in English, there's actually a phrase, which is an Ethiop, right? That's a person who's from Ethiopia. Although nowadays this term, uh, but, uh, but E didn't make an E sound. What do you mean exactly? Uh, ah, it, oh, yeah, yeah. So the thing is, um, I believe, I believe that modern Russian is called E because this letter isn't used anymore. They use the other E sound. So this would probably be Ethiop or Ethiop. I don't think Ethiop. If I said Ethiop, I will probably, I probably made a mistake. But in English, there's a term which is Ethiop. Uh, but that's archaic nowadays. They don't use it anymore. At least I don't think they do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That E is used, the different one. The E instead of the Y. But nowadays people in English actually use Ethiopian. The interesting thing is that in Russian, at least Russian from the 19th century, which is, well, after this was written, um, Ethiop actually had two different meanings. The first one was a person, a person from Ethiopia. The second one was actually a pejorative. So it was a bad word, right? And not only that, it usually meant or referenced someone from Africa. It didn't really matter where they were from or what part of Africa they were from. If they were from Africa, people would usually refer to them as Ethiop. And it even gets worse. And that is that it actually also meant barbarian. So there are books from the 19th century, I actually found one, um, and it has the following passage. So, Ifiop Niomyti, как твоя ружа называется? Говори, как твоя ружа называется, Скотина Казанская. So, translated, that would be like Ethiopian, unwashed or unmannered. What's the name of your gun or what's the name of your piece of equipment? Tell me what's the name of your gun, you filthy, uh, uncivilized person from Kazan. So Kazan is a city in Russia. So um, this person from the text can be seen. This person is from Kazan, which is located uh, east of Moscow and uh, was originally part of the uh, Tatar hordes, right? And uh, this person is a Russian person, the person who is addressed, but he still gets called, he still receives the name Ethiopian, simply because he doesn't either dress or act up to par. So this was a word that was basically used for people who were barbarians, or when civilized, or a derogatory term in that sense of the word. Obviously, it isn't used like that anymore, but it's a pretty interesting thing. When you read old text, you can encounter it sometimes. Next one. So we have the word uh, echidna. Uh, and echidna is also a Greek word. So this is not Tatarstan. Uh, so uh, echidna. So this is also a Greek word. It's not Slavic at all. And that comes from echidna, also Greek. And it means snake. But originally in ancient Greek, Greek it actually meant a poisonous snake, so a viper. It didn't mean any type of snake or just something you want to encounter. Only if it was poisonous, it would be referred to as a viper. Uh, this was copied into Russian. So Russian already had a word for snake, which is zmi or zmia. Um, but echidna was only used for poisonous snakes. And that is all of the pictures, I believe, in this part. We go on to the text. This is going to be... Uh, it's going to be nice. So um, before I start, we should probably say, so this is a ch, right? So I'm going to read this as a ch because at this time it was always written like a ch. So this is going to be chto, 
not sto. This letter, which is uh, nowadays is pronounced like sh or sh, I, I should say. Uh, in this time, it was still pronounced like a sh. So sto uh, sto vieshche is how I'm gonna read this. So let's uh, let's go with this. So sto vieshche v mirie jest bytnost od Boga. So um, this is gonna be like what uh, things? Let me grab this. It didn't work. Yeah. Oh, here it is. So um, what things in the world? Mir. You can see it with this eye, right? This eye distinguished between um, peace and the world. Jest bytnost od Boga is uh, the existence or life ot from God. I jest pismiana. All that is in the world. Oh, that's actually correct. Yeah. All that is in the world. Everything. Oh, that's perfect. Is of God. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. So if I make any mistakes, please tell me. I'm not a linguist. Russian is not my native language. I just do this for fun. So, is a i jest pismiana and is written, probably, patrebna do sloga. Patrebna. Uh, needed do until from slog. Slog is like a syllable part or language or word. So is, is listened to or needed uh, from every part, I guess. Uh, what's your native language? Uh, Croatian. So if I, if I sing while I pronounce it, like uh, when I'm reading Russian, you know I... So, uh, so uh, in is a virtue. So virtue is in this. Kamu vozimiete. Kamu vozimiete. So whom, to whom, dative case, vozimiete. Who makes it or produces it. So virtue to the, is part or to the person who creates it, I think. Uh, v Evangelie, so in the Gospels, dolk tamu uh, smatriete. So this is dolk. Uh, dolk is like something that you have to do. Uh, tamu to dative uh, smatriete, to look. So you have to look into the Gospels, I think. You have to observe. No, it's, it's your duty, dolk, duty, right? It's your duty to observe and to look at the Gospels, to read them. Dobro uh, so virtue, exclamation, juna v desnych stavit, 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 juna is junost, so that would be youth. Okay, so desny, desno is right, as in left and right, but it can also mean correct uh, in Old Slavic. So I think stavit. the youth has to put uh, virtue, has to put virtue, uh, probably desnek stavit, fionok desnek stavit, stavit. Hmm. So it's a virtue if the youth something. Hmm. Anyway, so we have a S, so this is a year sign. S, Fiesta Praticum, with me, Evangelia, Dogs, Matriot, whoever wants to attain grace is owed to look into the cost. That's a perfect, <laughs> that's a perfect way of putting it. Yeah, that's perfect. Nice. Um, so, Starimi Ludmi, so with old or older people, I guess this is just mean old people, if besiedach praslavit, so with words or in words or conversations, praslavit, praslavit, um, celebrate or, or bring grace to install virtue into youth, that's, yeah, very nice. V kamu dobrata jest, so in whom, or um, good kindness, Dobrata, jest 
in whom goodness kindness is vsya vyeshchi nie vdiva all things are not a miracle uh, or a wonder all things that happen probably to them right all things that happen to them aren't a miracle because they're good uh, yako uspiet uh, yako is like kak um, uspiet is succeed so are you wearing pants so yako uh, uspiet um, how succeed vsyak v nebesno vsyak everyone in nebesno in um nebesa uh sky nebesa like rai sky like uh, uh this is an interesting word so you have um geneva geneva heavenly that's that's the right word i was looking for perfect thank you so every in heavenly so this word right Zhniva, Zhniva probably in russian uh, this word is only attested at least i could find that it was only attested in belarusian um and basically uh it means harvest right um so it means yako uspiete or yako uspiete so when succeeded everyone will reap the benefits or harvest celestial benefits probably it makes sense uh yunim istarim so to the young and the old or znivo ah nice it's in polish i didn't know that znivo are you polish so uh oh yes the what's this Tsha to endeavor or uh, so both youth and older people have to try or aim for uh, aim to zlob zlob is, uh, that's grudge uh, grudge or malice of uh, sin griech Oh, that's you. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Oh, because of the name, right? Oh, nice, nice, nice. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, zlob uh, would be malice or grudge. Grechom with instrumental case with sin. Vsegda, always. So they always have to try to avoid probably um, committing sin. Tiem with whom opasatisya. The harvest grain, yeah. What's opasatisya? Opasatisya. I have no clue what that means. Uh, let's see. To be afraid. Ah, opasno. Like, uh, like dangerous. But in Russian it means to be afraid. Interesting. I didn't know that actually. To avoid danger. Ah, no, I don't know. So you have, they have the dužnost, that they have to avoid bad, avoid sin, and always avoid uh, or be fearful of uh, uh, the untruth and, and the dangers, probably. Something like that. It's hard, man. It's hard to translate this stuff. Oh, see, so, so save yourself. Um, that would actually also make sense because in Croatian it's spasitise, right? Uh, spasatsa, probably. And uh, I don't know any Polish, so I don't know what it would be in Polish, but uh, that's something I would guess as well. So let's go on to the next one. Um, this actually has a lot of different words. Let's check. So, a few of my favorite words actually. So first one is, uh, let's go over, this is Z, uh, different forms. And then we have the Polish one. I think this is the Z, right? Hey there. Um, what are we doing? We're looking at uh, an old document from 1694. So I don't know, um, Krzyż, can you tell me if this is the, that's the uh, Russian Z, right? The same thing because polish also has like a different one i believe like with a little 
Accent aigu. Accent to the right, I guess. Um, so, while you answer, let me just go over this. So, first one, or first two, the pair, is uh, Jenich et Jena. So, this is rather easy, I guess. Jenich is bridegroom, right? That's the guy who's about to get married. And Jena actually means two different things, just like it actually means two different things in a lot of Slavic languages. But in Russian, in modern Russian, Jena only means wife. It doesn't mean woman. So if you would refer to a woman, you would say Zhenshina, right? It's not Zhena. Um, but in Old East Slavic and in Church Slavonic, Zhena primarily meant wife, uh, woman. <laughs> and then it would mean wife as well. So, um, but in this case, uh, and in this stage, I think Zhena only meant wife. So we have the bridegroom and we have the wife. Yeah, just animologically. Ah, interesting. I didn't know that. Polish has a soft and hard variants. Yeah. Yeah, Polish is very interesting. It's a language I would love to learn one day. So, uh, next one is Zhila, which is a vein, a tendon. I think this is the case in most Slavic languages. And then we have a very interesting one, actually. Zhezl, or Zhezl, because it's a year. Zhezl. So, this actually means a stick or a staff in Russian but in other Slavic languages I think the meaning changed I know that in Croatian you have Zhezlo which means a scepter like the thing that uh, like a king has a golden one or filled with diamonds basically to show off and um, or as a symbol symbol of power so uh, but in Russian I believe at least in ultra Slavonic it only meant stick like it didn't mean anything else so this is a stick and then we have Zhaba. Zhaba, um, in modern Russian, it usually only means toad. Um, but in Old East Slavic, it meant toad and uh, frog. But modern Russian actually has a different word for that. So uh, as you might already know, Zhaba only means toad. But Russian has the word Yegushka. And Yegushka means frog. And if I remember correctly, uh, Yegushka comes from like Lyagat which is to jump, or to, oh, no, not to jump, that's prigat, uh, to kick. And ushka is like a diminutive version. So you have uh, lagat, like to kick, like a little kicker, right? Nowadays, jez is a very high style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's funny how that changes. So um, next one, we have juravl, juravl, juravl. So that would be a crane, uh, the animal, the bird, right? To make a big nest. And then we have one, <laughs> I love this. Even the drawing looks uh, looks adorable. So this is Zhuzhelitsa, Zhuzhelitsa. And that is a, uh, Zhuzhelitsa is, uh, it's, it's onomatopoeic word. So um, it comes from the sound that it makes. Uh, and it's actually a ground beetle. But even though it's a ground beetle, it's actually flying right now. So zh, right? Yeah, that Polish one is a zh, if I remember correctly. Yeah, you wrote the IPA. So, Zhuzhelitsa. And there's actually a second one, which is kind of similar. It's Zhuk. <laughs> That's this one right here. Zhuk. And um, onomatopoeic as well, obviously, because there's a Russian verb, and it's Zhuzhat, and it means to hum or to buzz, right? So, it's a, it's a very funny word. I always love that. Zhuzhat. Uh, we have that next one. All of these words are Slavic, by the way. So then we have the next one, uh, which is Javo, uh, Javoronok, Javoran, Javaranok, and that would be like a bird. Um, I know that it also means like a morning person. So if someone likes, uh, how different the quality of the different, I love how different is quality of different pictures on the same page. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's, you can read it pretty easily, like it's legible, other times you can't. Uh, but this is like a bird or an early, like uh, if someone loves the morning, like an early bird, uh, you also call them like that. And then we have this word, which is Zhrebi. Um, this actually has two different meanings. So in Old Church Slavonic, this meant a die, right? Dice. Uh, Protect the accent alerts. Yeah, the thing is, <laughs> I know that. 
but sometimes when I read, I read too quickly and then I don't pay attention to it or I use Croatian accents and then I read it the wrong way. So that's my bad. Uh, if I make a mistake, just please let me know. So, žrebi, and that actually means a dice, but it also means faith. Or actually not faith, but fate. So, it actually makes sense, right? Because when you throw the dice, you basically decide your fate. Uh, back in the day when you would gamble for a lot of money, you would decide your whole fate based on one dice throw. So, in ultra Slavonic, it only meant, if I remember correctly, it only meant dice. But in Russian, it means dice. Although they usually use kost, right? Lot as in my lot in life. Mm -hmm. Fate lot, lot in life. Um, although nowadays, I think they have kost, um, which also which means bone, by the way. But uh, it also means dice. And then we have žitnica. Uh, žita, right? Uh, so this is a granary. And this is a word that isn't really used that often anymore in Russian. I think the Russian um, version of this word, they have a different words, ambar. Ambar? I don't know if it's ambar or ambar, but it's a Turkic word. And it's actually a Persian word. Kost or even kubik. Ah, like a cube, that makes sense. So uh, the word that's preferred in Russian nowadays is ambar. Thank you, Talos. And that is a Turkic word and actually a Persian word. And it means granary. But žitnica, as you can see, žita, right? Grain, uh, wheat. Um, this is a Slavic version, but it isn't really used anymore. It's not that popular. And when it's used, it's more like a formal style. And then we, I think that's it. Žoluć. Uh, ah, žoluć. Žoluć, that's an acorn. I think that's the same in most Slavic languages. Žitnica is a word was used all the way up to Soviet times. I didn't even know that. Interesting. Žitnici. So, this part is gonna be uh, is gonna be interesting. So, next one. Ženich i žena. So, bridegroom and a bride. Životna uh, slavjesna. Okay, životna uh, in life, slavjesna. Um, well, I know what slavjesna means in Russian. It's like uh, verbal, right? Životna slavjesna. In life, verbal. Doesn't make any sense. Bridegroom and wife. Životna um, slavjesna. Hmm, interesting. And we go on. Spreakshisya. Oh, yeah. So this is, uh, I, I remember looking this up. So spreakshisya. In the olden days, this actually meant to con being connected by marriage. So they were connected by marriage. And this is the old form. So this is blagye. So yats, blagye. But then the G would change into a Z sound. United in life by word. Beautifully put. Thank you. Azeke prophet. Životna slavjesna. United in life by word. So this is actually united in marriage. And then we have, we're connected by marriage. Uh, and blazi is like a blessing. So blagje. Dabro, good. So it's a blessing. Da valja žizn djesna. Da vodja. Ah, vodja. Da, so, da, uh, uh, South Slavic word, to, or to be, to be able to. Vodja, uh, lead, žiznja, life, djesna. To lead life in a good way, probably. Prava, žic prava. Rodjašče čada. So, this is the old past tense. Born čada. It's čado, uh, old way of saying kids. Ribionok, right? So, to give birth to kids. Ljudi umnožajut. Umnožajut. So, uh, people are popula or not populating. It's like um, umnožatsa. To multiply, right? So, people are multiplying. Uh, na hvalu Bogu. So, due to God's grace or 
thanks to God. <laughs> Used to be chants. <laughs> so, na hvala Bogu. Zemlju naseljajut. So, they're populating the world. Um, naseliti. S, uh, blagimi ljudzmi. With people of grace. With... Um, blagimi. With good people, probably. Blago, good. Gold. Yeah. With good people. Bies... Uh, ah, so with good people, it's uh, easy to live with good people, right? Or bezbiedna, bezbiedna, without any difficulties. Zlia že mnogo. There's a lot of bad people, probably. Imieut. They have vrediti, vrediti. So the bad no vriedit probably right as in to value, but vriedit can also mean like to insult. So the bad people probably uh, know how to insult. Imieut vriedite. Hmm, I don't know this one. Jemnogo, bad. See the thing is a lot of times. <laughs> When I don't know the Russian word, I'm using the Croatian one and the meaning is pretty different. Because vri, I remember this one video and it's also something that I struggled with. Like vriedno in Croatian means someone who is diligent and someone who is hardworking. On je vrijedan. But in Russian, vriedna means the complete opposite. It's very negative. So I think you're right. I think this is uh, to harm, to damage. So people who are bad will bring harm to others, right? That makes sense. So usierna. Uh, uh, so this is u usierna žilu. Usierna is diligent. Uh, root namjagai. Na, oh, that's the, of course natjagai. So to pull blago to pull. In the good, you have to pull, you you have to diligently pull the vein or tendon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this comes from Greek, but it was pronounced like O. There's some books actually I read about this. There's some books that claim that it was like O uh, if it was at the start, but we don't really have a lot of evidence for that. Uh, at least maybe... There is, but I couldn't find anything about it. There's only some authors that claim that it was read like O. Oh. But nowadays, at least in modern uh, Church Slavonic, uh, it's read like O. Oh. But it indeed comes from, from Greek. So, Vlagoje. And then, že zlom praganjaj. Uh, zlom, zlo, right? So, this is uh, um, evil. Uh, praganjac, that would be to chase away. Or to like remove, remove evil. Vsev mirje, sem. Ah, okay. So vsev mirje, everything in the world, seven evils. So this re uh, references the seven deadly sins, I think, right? So you have like lust, you have gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, and pride. Uh, so you have to get rid of the evils, and there are seven of them, right? And then you have primios, uh, primios, uh, blagi. So you you accept, I think. Oh, Mikitko, привет. Happy to see you, man. Actually, it's it's a huge honor. Thank you so much for coming. That's actually a real big honor. Uh, so primios, uh, blagi. Um, so you probably take or you accept blagi uh, blago, so the good uh, so fate or lot to you, so this accusative всюду, everywhere exactly, perfect, nice придёшь, uh, придёшь <laughs> So you come or you go to the granary. 
So this is probably a reference to heaven, right? Žitnicu nebesnu odsudu. From here. So you go to the eternal celestial uh, rai. So to heaven. But they call it a granary, which is kind of interesting. It makes sense, though. It makes sense. Interesting. Next one. So this is uh, one of my favorite letters, which got removed in 1708, right? People are the grain of God. That's actually very well put. Exactly. Nice, nice. So this is one of my favorite letters. And this is the letter Z. And the letter Z uh, was very prominent in the old Slavic language, right? In Proto-Slavic, there was a sound, and that sound was Z, and it was usually represented by one symbol, and that was this letter. And this letter looks like the Latin S, but it doesn't represent that sound, uh, and represented the sound Z. But even when uh, the Cyrillic alphabet was created, so that would be the ninth century, this sound was slowly fading. So it was slowly disappearing, actually. So um, uh, St. Cyril and Methodius uh, based the Cyrillic script on the speech of the Slavs in southern or it would be northern Greece and they still had this sound which also the reason why it got introduced and this sound is extremely rare because there's only a few languages that still have this sound Slavic languages for example Macedonian has this uh, Macedonian still has this sound and they're pretty conservative with it it's not that like words that originally had this Z sound they still pronounce it like Z it kind of depends on where you are. If you're in the capital, people usually don't do it, but once they start speaking formally, they will start using this letter. And it's also, I believe, still the only letter, or the only language, Macedonian being, that actually has a distinctive letter for this. I know Polish has the Z, but they write it as a digraph, right? You write it like DZ or DZ. Um, so, here we go, the Z. Now, you might ask, why did the old East Slavs, or early modern Slavs, if I can put it like that, still use this letter? Well, this is purely due to like etymological reasons. There was no reason for them to use this because the sound simply didn't exist in Russian anymore. So uh, it was actually, oh yeah. They created Glagolithic, you're, you're perfectly right. And then later on, their descendants created the uh, Cyrillic script. My bad, I misspoke. Thank you for, <laughs> thank you for uh, correcting me. You're right, you're right. So, um, this Z sound, right? Uh, why was it still written? Well, purely because of etymological reasons. The funny thing is that even when it was written, most of the time it was written incorrectly because the people, the writers, simply didn't have access to a lot of resources that we have access to today. They simply didn't have the option. They had books uh, of their predecessors, but they didn't have an internet database that they could check. They didn't have an etymological dictionary that could tell them um, where this Z was written. So a lot of times what would happen is that if one writer would make a mistake, if the other writers didn't notice this, they would copy that mistake as well. And this happened with this letter a lot. A lot of different times you will see incorrect usage of this letter, etymologically speaking. So let's go over this. We have uh, Z, Z, Z. So in Russian, this would be written as a Z. So the first word is zvezda, but read as zvezda, right? Um, this z does make etymological sense uh, because in uh, Proto-Slavic and actually in Old Church Slavonic, this was the letter z was present here. So this is perfectly okay. So this means star. And then we have uh, another word which is based on zvezda, and that's zvezdo zakonik. And this is an astronomer. So they didn't use astronom or ast astronom, I believe in Russian. Um, they used Zvezda Zakonik because it was a Slavic word and they preferred that. Sometimes, not all the time. So the, this is correct usage of the Z. Now we we'll go on to incorrect usages of letter Z, and that's pretty much everything else. So we have Zienica, 
which is pupil. This is incorrect. This should be a Z because in Old Church Slavonic and in Proto-Slavic, there was no Z there. So sadly, this is incorrect. Then we have Zayets, which was read as Zayets. Sadly, this is also incorrect because um, etymology related to the Eastern Slavic Zillow. Interesting, but I don't think, okay. So Zayets wasn't written with a Z sound. It was written with a Z. Then we have uh, Zmi, which was also written with a Z, not with a Z. And we have Zelje. Uh, or Zenitsa got contaminated with Zelje. Interesting. And Zelje, which also didn't contain the uh, Z. It also contained the Z sound. So let's go over this. Uh, we have a pupil, we have star, we have astronomer, we have hair. So this is not a bunny, this is a hair. Um, zelje or zelje. Um, nowadays in Russian, if I recall correctly, this means potion, like these magical potions, right? But originally it meant vegetation. So it meant vegetation or like herbs or grass. Um, there's also the word zlak. Uh, which also means grass, which is also not really used in modern Russian anymore. But we have a uh, little sound Z and uh, Zmi. And Zmi means dragon or serpent. But it only means serpent in Christianity, as in the Bible, the story of the Bible. So when Eve takes the apple, that snake, that serpent is called Zmi. And then we have this. And I really tried to find it. I really tried to see what it meant, but I have no clue. So this is like... Um, Zelvi. And I asked a lot of different people and sadly none of us was able to figure out what it actually means. Zelvi. It it's also not very clear. It looks like potion container, like uh like all of these are potions. But I have no clue. I really don't know what it means. Um if if any one of y'all knows it, please let me know. <laughs> Privet. Привет. So, uh, so then we have zelo pismena slagach zimlia palnit. Okay, so zelo is the old way of saying uh, очень, so very. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so this is the old way of saying uh, very. Pismena written. Slagach, slog, slog at style or syllable, zemlya earth, bonit, to fill, right? Sloga uh, zemlya, uh, hmm. A lot of written in words, parts of the earth, fill. So this is, uh, this is going to be complicated. Mm. I don't know what it means. <laughs> Maybe some of y'all know. So, uh, so in um, Znamya So in Chislie, Chisla is a number. Znamya, uh, it's like a flag, but not a flag, it's like a banner, like a military flag. Banner six. So there's six flags. So in the number, there's six flags. Uh, something related to Polnitsia Zemlya Sluchami. I don't know if it's related, like, because I can't seem to find the Sluchami. Sluchami Zemlya. Sluchami Zemlya Polnitsia seems to be related. Hmm. I don't know. I really don't know. It's really hard. Onaga, um, onago, onago, um, which is which or that. Uh, genitive, nevolnit, uh, nevolnit. Hmm. Rumor goes that. Interesting. I didn't know that. Rumor goes that. Hmm. Chislo 6 trebna, 
uh, treba uh, is needed, right? Trebna. So uh, number six or six of something needed vo vieščech i ljecech. So in uh, vo in things and years. Hmm. In things and years. Hmm. Za zlobu v kazni, za for uh, zlob is spite, for spite in, this is punishment, so in spite, for spite in punishment, na starych i djetjech, na on for probably in this case for the old and the young chislo shestrevna fishah letyah zvezda blistayet so the the star is sparkling right flickering of svaye mierye vsyaka in their own measure every zvezda zakonik every astronomer smatrit uh, um, smotrit, smotrit, looks v nebje at the sky for symbols. V nebje znaka. That makes sense. Looks at the sky to look for symbols. Kak, or, 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 or a sign from God, probably, right? Kakda čto budjet, when something will be, v Božje to volje. Uh, when something will be because of the will of God, Za djela, za djela, for things vsjaka, for all things, zamjerjajet, zamjerjajet, doli, doli. I don't know. For all things, zamjeriti, maybe, like... To hold accountable, or not, not, not hold accountable. To hold something against someone. But that doesn't make any sense in this context. Hmm. Oh wait, this is dolia, right? Wait, let me check to make sure if I'm if I'm correct. Mm. Yeah, that's dolia. Dolia. So this is a uh, this is a uh, fate. It's an astrologist, not an astronomer. Are you sure? Because when I see this, I usually think of like an astronomer. Maybe maybe it's an astrologist. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Zadjela vsyaka ne mjeret doli. For deeds cuts fate. Hmm. Nice. For deeds cuts fate. So, uh, zelje uh, jasti. So that's the old form of to eat. So to eat uh, greens, basically. Zmi tebe ne vredit. So the, the snake... The devil in this case will not harm you. Zjenica vodu. This is a, a sentence I had trouble with. So zjenica, so uh, pupil vodu. Dative of water. So pupil to water, maybe a little bit of water. Uh, mieru in size. Pit da bied. Da biedito. Biedit. Astrologer. Astrologist because he looks for a sign from God. Astrologer is just explaining. Hmm. The thing is, usually during this period, right, science and theology were connected. So, um, what I usually think when I read this is that sometimes even mythology is still connected. So, if you practice science, right, if you if you become an astronomer, it doesn't automatically mean that you would disregard the existence of God, for example. So that's why I think this is an astronomer, but 
if this is astrology astrologist and you found it then then uh, that's totally correct let's see is this is uh, i have no clue what this means so probably a little bit of water or pupil of water Fimiero, peach. a little bit of drink i don't know peach drink da piedit piedit hmm okay oh let's let's move on let's move on <laughs> before before i lose my mind um next one so this is the letter uh send it to i moving his eye oh boditi like do you think this is vodit like to lead i don't know i don't know this is this is complicated um so anyway so this is the letter z and uh, we have a lot of new pictures to cover so this first one is zemljenica and this would be a strawberry at least the family of strawberries because in modern russian it's klubnika uh and this word i asked it uh someone was very kind to point it out it's zemljanika in modern russian so you have zemljanika and you have klubnika and they're basically different types of strawberries if i remember correctly uh, so that's the difference and then we have zamok which is a lock and we have uh so this is pretty interesting sometimes this is the shape of the v right so they don't actually write the line they just make a square that's what it looks like a rectangle so this is uh, z uh or zvonets because the o was still written like it was klubnika is just a very ah okay so this is a a, a bell right zvanok uh in bulgarian they actually still use this term Right, so they have zv yer zvnets, I believe. Maybe there's someone who speaks Bulgarian who can correct me. And then we have zlatnits, zlatica. Uh, this is a golden coin, zlato, right? Zlato, gold. We have znamya, which is a banner or flag, mostly banner, military one. Then we have zaviesa. Um, let's see, zaviesa which is uh, Zanavies, but you also have Zavies in Russian, which is a curtain. Uh, and we have uh, Zabralo, Zabralo, and that would be, well, Zabralo in modern Russian means a visor, right? Uh, the thing, like if you have a helmet, the little piece you can look through, uh, that's called a, a visor or visor, I believe. And uh, back then, so 300 years ago, also, it also meant fence. So uh, fence and in modern Russian, that would be Zabor. So fence and Zabor. And then we have Zimlya. And that would be Earth. I think that's everything. Zimlya, Zamok, da. Odlično. So let's go on. So Zimlya vješć kriepka. So the Earth is a solid thing. <laughs> Uh, Bogom, so instrumental of God, with God, sotvorena. So with God, it's made. Ninachem slovom, slovom. Ninachem slovom, with no words. So instrumental, with no words. Yevo ukrieplena. Made him ukrieplena is to strengthen, right? So with n no other words, it was strengthened. Made by God. Da. Bogom stvorena. Zabrala ljudjem. So uh, offense to ljudjem, to people. If potrebah ugodna. Ah, so this is pretty funny. So offense... Um, People can use it in a way that they seem fit, right? Ugona, kako imi ugodna. So, so it might suit them. It might they might use it. A i gdje zamok and our counter and where 
uh, a lock nie всякому not to everyone vhodno vhod vhod is entrance so <laughs> and where a lock is isn't everyone's entrance right potrebo vhodno zvonets uh, so uh, uh, a bell is ringing or making sound dvizhim viesht i vremya so it ah dvizhim so it's moving uh, as it moving uh, it moves viesh can also mean like nature or essence right so it's moving time things essence and time viesh i vremya interval yeah 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 that's that's a better word for it so vhodno uh, so a gold coin or money makes it easier в случаях злых бремя а бремя like a, a burden so a gold coin or money makes the burden of hard times uh, easier right it makes suffering easier because you can pay your way through it. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty insane. Znamia po... So this means it's polkach. So banner in or with pol polkach. It's like pole, like field. Znamia v polkach. Or maybe it's Polish? Polkach, svojstvo. Polk. Ah, polk, regiment. Perfect, thank you, spasiba. So, the banner uh, in regiments. Uh, svojstvo dajet znate. Svojstvo is like organization, right? But it also means property. Vojnoja sojedzin. Ah, nice, nice, nice. Thank you. Uh, so let's uh, the organization and property know. Svojstvo also means like a formation, right? Zaviesa od graz, glaz. So um, uh, a curtain from eyes, čužd, so foreign things, zaslanjate. So uh, curtains, shield, foreign eyes from what you have. So if you have curtains, they shield um they shield the world or they disallow the world to see what you have right so orate orate so that is um to plow right uh zemlu so to plow the earth v pokorje učiš se in uh so in reproach in failure Reproach, you have to learn. I don't see how these two are connected. Hmm. Banner in regiments gives identity. Nice. Yeah, that sounds much better. Yudim so to, to, to serve people, humans, mankind. In necessity. Oh, so in necessity, you won't become lazy. So you have to serve humanity and in necessity, you don't become lazy. Humility. Pokora. Ljudjam. Nice. Pokora. In humility. Oh, you will learn in humility. And then with when you serve humanity or people uh that makes sense that makes sense nice yuzem služiti vožstvo da odlično najat idemo dalje next one we only have two more to go um here we go letter e and a lot of different pictures and this is a an interesting one. So this first one, this is Igot. And Igot, it's very, very difficult to find some information about this. But it turns out that this is a deep cylindrical mortar. 
And a mortar is that thing that you use to grind herbs with, right? Modern Russian uses a different term for this. I forgot the term, but I know that igot isn't used anymore. The etymology of this word is kind of disputed. Um, I couldn't find a decisive answer, but several dictionaries. Oh, stupa. Yeah, there you go. Ручная stupka. Right? You're right. You're right. Perfect. Thank you. Спасибо тебе большое. So, um, but a few dictionaries basically said that it comes from Greek, which <laughs> makes sense. And it comes from Igvis. And there is a version, which is Igvion. And Igot, Igot, and Igvion, or Igdion. I don't know. It's kind of similar. Not really, <laughs> but basically some dictionaries claim that it's, it's it has the same origin that was borrowed from Greek. And igdis, or igdis and in ancient Greek, means mortar, which makes sense, right? Uh, then we have igla, which means needle. Ikra, uh, which means row, like uh, uh, fish eggs. Istochnik, which is like a source, a uh, water source. Uh, ikona. Uh, which is uh, an icon, right? A religious icon in the um, Orthodox Church, uh, Eastern Christian churches. Then we have Izba, and this is a cottage. This is a peasant's hut, right? And the funny thing is that this word uh, was actually borrowed um, by the English. So the English language has a term, and it's uh, Izba. No, Izba. 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 Izba, that's it. Izba, and it's uh, the name of a Russian log hut. Because they were probably so incredibly common. So the Russian language actually borrowed this term. I don't think a lot of people know it, um, but it exists. <laughs> um, then we have two other ones, which is idol, right? So this is uh, a statue. Um, not specifically a normal statue, because Russian has a different word for that. But this is... Um, an idol, right? So a statue usually of pagan gods or some kind of pagan statue. Um, and this thing, this animal is very interesting because there is um, this this book. So Istomin Bukvar, this book has been analyzed for many centuries because it's extremely interesting. And no one was able to figure out what this was. Be everyone thought this was like a mistake, right? Until I think the late... 20th century, uh, where some um, where a dictionary appeared, and it basically listed this term. Now, afterwards, several different papers were published, one of which I read today to be able to tell you this story. Um, because this has always been a mystery, this animal, what is this? It's even like, it's not even legible. Is this a n? Is it an e? You, we just don't know. So uh, let me take you back to 1981. So there was a dictionary in 1981 who translated this, and this is a iechnilat, iechnilat. Actually, it's not a t. Iechnilat, and it translated iechnilat as a uh, gornostai, and that's a short tail weasel. And why did it translate this? Because the theory is that. Ancient Greek had a term, well, this is a fact, and it's ichneu, ichneo, ichneo, and it means to trace, the infinitive to trace. So they were looking and they were like, what animal traces? When animal looks for things, there's actually a lot of different animals that do that. But one of these animals is a weasel. And this guy who made this dictionary basically said, okay, this is gonna be a weasel. But then more studies started popping up. And eventually they found that in the 15th century, uh, there was a collection of fables. And this collection was called Stefant i Ichnilat. And this became popular only in the 17th century. So it existed for 200 years, but not a lot of people knew about it. So it took quite a long time to become popular. When was this book written? Well, this was written, or this primer, was written in the 17th century. And in the 17th century is when this animal or that book, the fairy tale book, became popular. So what does Stefan Ichnilat mean? What does it talk about? 
So it's a fairy tale about a boy and an animal. And the animal is called Ichnilat, right? And that's the name of the animal. And what animal is it? It's a jackal, which makes sense. It makes biological sense because jackals were present where, uh, well, at least in a big part of Russia, not the eastern parts, not the colder parts, but in the old empire, right? <laughs> so obscure meme. Exactly. This is pretty interesting. So this, through that book, that book, which is more than 500 years old, they were able to figure out that Ichnilat actually means shakal, right? So a jackal in English. It's, it's a huge meme. It was really, really funny. So, uh, on to the penultimate part. Pismiana, Ije, right? So, Ije is whom? So, written whom wrote. Slozie, the old form of slogie. So, in syllables, in words, in language. Pochinisia, uh, pochinisia, to obey, right? So, you have to obey or submit. Pismiana Ije. Hmm. Pismiana. Written. Uh, written. In words to obey. Hmm. Complicated. Ije slozia. Pachi. Pachi nisia. Hmm. Okay. Uh, chiu. Uh, chiu. So, uh, who's. Ikonu zriev. Pismia ije v slogi slovi počinisia. Pismia ije v slogi. Ah, makes sense. Ije takše. Ije is who, right? So you have očenaš, ije je sin na nebesech. So ije who is, but it has a lot of different meanings. It can even mean kakoi. Like uh, it's used in a lot of, lot of different contexts. So čiu ikonu zriev. Uh, whose icon zriet, like uh, to mature, whose icon matures, pamiatno, uh, so pamiatno in Croatian would be smart, but in Russian, uh, pam it means memorable, right? Memorable, vjedisja, uh, vjedit, vjedit, to know, zriet is to look. Zrieti is to look at what? Yeah, exactly. Zrieti. Yeah, right. Yeah, this is incredibly complicated. Zriet, but I don't know if this is. Mmm, Zrieti, Zrieti. That's also yet, right? So that would make sense. And you have. Hmm. Hmm. Both words contain a yet. If I'm correct. Hmm. Okay, so uh, memorable. To know, to see Icon. But this would make more sense. I, I never know how to pronounce that name. Krzyk? Krzyk? <laughs> so uh, to look at an Icon would make more sense, right? To look or to посмотреть на икону. It's better to know. Is mlada uh, from mlada, malada, right? From from youth, from young. Iga, uh, that's yoke, like Tatar yoke, right? The horde. A uh, yoke is mlada yoke of dabrom in good every ponyesi to take with you, to carry, to bear. Hmm. Is is mla, mlada ego v da, dobrom vsak ponesi to a good bring to everyone from youth from the yoke of your youth you can bring good to everyone chistatu hrani so save or or hold on to you chistatu chist uh, clean cleanliness but probably cleanliness of the soul right in your body, probably, right? In your physical appearance, in your body, in your soul, 
carry that yoke from a young. Yeah, that makes sense. Exactly. Perfect. Uh, Igot, so that's the mortar. Igot, um, Patriapna is needed. Patriapna, um, Ido, Papirait, Papirait. The mortar is needed to trample the idol. To defy? To Probably. I think you're right, Sergei. Yeah, makes sense. To, to defy the idols. Maybe this is like to not become a heathen. Maybe. Religious sense, obviously. Mm. Hmm. Interesting. Istochnikum. So, <coughs> excuse me. Source. Blaga. The source of good. A spring of good. Budzi. Hmm. Napadati the attack. <laughs> oh no! Wait, this is the solder. So you have to solder connect or become the source of good. Tilly sees all the clench of Tilo. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. So this is related to the body, right? That makes sense. Napayam. Napayam. Let me check. Napayaj. You have to solder on. Yeah, that makes sense. Shas. Kanifol. What is this? Kanifol. 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 Well then. Oh. <laughs> Be drunk from the source of good. That sounds nice. That sounds really nice. Okay. Um, vo, uh, izbie, vo izbie život, vo izbie život i kloju že šiut. Ah, so in this cottage, in this house, uh, they live and with a needle they sew. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. That's funny, actually. She would polze, so uh, usefulness, polze, ljudi, ljudi, vjezde everywhere. Vospočiut, vospočiut, I have no clue. Vospočiut, vospočiut. Hmm. Istočnikom blaga vjeti. Napoja. V mjestja, v mjesto, so in the place, imena prijemljeca, prijemljeca, acceptable. Počti, počtevač, to rest. Počivati v miru. To rest eternally. Watch it there. Hmm. Prijemljica iže strekisja zlobe. To get rid of evil. Nie svergijet. Svergijot. Svergijot. No, right? Ah, so this is svergnuć. Nie svergnuć. Certain yes, so also different form. Overthrow. Tia. Don't become, don't overthrow. Tia, tibia, niže, lower. Whoa, okay. Fmiesto imena in the place of, with a name. Priemlietia, iže, who. Strekisia. To get rid of evil. Hmm. Does anyone know this? Does anyone understand? I love how there's a theology. I, it's insane. Like, this is so funny. Privet. Ah, Privet. This is, it's, it's literally like theology. And then it talks about plants. <laughs> and then it talks about like nails. 
It's it's funny, dude. It's really funny. Fesli nie nie prejam iże. A nie strejam. Hmm. I don't know. Ja tych przyszło. Interesting. I have no clue what this is. I really don't know. <laughs> Does anyone? If not, we're just gonna continue because uh, on to the last one. Because this is uh, <laughs> this is this is too difficult. Just imiene. Like this has to be name, right? Ime, ime. Be aware. Yeah, but this means so this should be overthrow, right? To conquer, tia. So this is the accusative. Uh, no, wait. Uh, uh, accusative. Nije. Lower. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's let's go on. Let's go on to the last one. E. Ah, e desetarichne. Vosmerichne. Which one is it? So basically, uh, this letter I. Um, it wasn't really used in a lot of different situations. The only reason why it was used, well, originally was to save space, right? So, uh, can be to bring down. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. To... Ah, but then it would be to bring down, to bring down. Okay. So anyway, so the letter I, this became popular, if I remember correctly, around the fort. 15th century, at least it became standardized. And this happened in the southern Slavic languages. So Serbian, for example, which uses a Cyrillic script, they started using this letter pretty consistently when they were saving space. So because, uh, um, you know, the paper that they used was a pretty expensive and B, it wasn't, you know, they didn't have a ton of it, they had to save space. And one of the ways to do that was if a word ended in the letter A and they had to continue on the next page or a different page, uh, they would use this I. And eventually, this I came to be used only uh, in front of other vowels. So for example, if someone wanted to write EE, -E, the first I would be written like this and the second I would be written like the normal Russian I, right? The contemporary one. Um, in this book, obviously, this is the 17th century, late 17th century, early 18th. So this has been standardized for many centuries. So we can actually see this here. Um, so, for example, this letter, Greek, iota. So e o just follows a vowel. So it's going to be used like an e. Now that I told you this, take a look at this one. Ipo kentavr, right? This doesn't follow, the I isn't followed by a vowel. So why is it being used? This is completely random. Sometimes the rules just, they didn't care. They simply used whatever they wanted to use. Sometimes they looked at the Greek word. If the Greek word uses a iota, they would use the I. But most of the time, they would simply pick whatever they wanted. In this case, for example, historiograph, um, they, uh, decided to use the Greek standard, right? Because historia in Greek, uh, which means science or examination, was written with an iota. Actually, in hippocentavr, uh, the I in ipos, which means horse, was also written with an epsilon or with an uh, iota, which means that in Greek or in Russian, they copied it with the iota. Uh, but it was incredibly random. One of the other random things is the omega, right? Sometimes they decided to use it, other times they didn't. It was basically up to the writer itself. So, ipo kentavr. What is this? So, this is a centaur. Funny thing is that this is made up of two words, ipos, which means horse, and kentauros, which means centaur. So, this actually means horse centaur, meaning half man, half horse, half horse. <laughs> that doesn't really make sense. So we have historiograph, historiograph, yeah. And that would be historiographer, right? Uh, his or English use the same terms. So that is the guy who basically collects all the data and writes the official history of a state. So he writes everything down, Babiest, right? And it comes from historia, uh, which means science. And you have grafo, which means to write, or to draw, drawing science. Um, there's actually a Slavic word for this, and we're going to encounter that pretty soon. 
Exactly. Oh, perfect. Sergey, you literally said it. Get the pieces. So there's two other words. If I'm, yeah, so you have Jerusalem and Grad. So that would be uh, city, Gradu, and Jerusalem. So the city of Jerusalem, the holy city. Uh, and you have Jordan, Rieka. So Yat and Rieka. So the River Jordan or Jordan River, whatever you prefer. So last text we're going to cover. Um, this, let me just scroll down. Perfect. So, pravo pisati. So, correct or good to write. Pismiana i nužno. So, you have or writing of this letter. So, as you can see here, it's written, see, with this symbol, and here it's written with two dots. It's the same letter. So, the writing of this letter is necessary. So you cannot omit using this letter. Povjestopistjev. So the writers of history, povjestopistjev, slušaj neutružno. Neutružno. So, wait, don't bother, don't bother to listen to the writers of history. Don't bother to listen to the writers of history. Hmm. Probably because they didn't use it correctly. Hmm. Maybe it means something else. Um, Jordan, Reka, so the River Jordan, Grad, Jerusalem, city of Jerusalem. Yeah, it would make sense if this was the exact opposite, right? It would make sense if it was like, you have to listen to the writers of the past. But uh, if you have... Hmm. Neutrujno means like, not to bother, right? Don't bother me with it. Neutrujno. Hmm. I don't know. I, I think it would mean the opposite, but it, it I cannot seem to understand it from the text. Anyway, Grat Jerusalem, so city of, or don't be bothered by, but that would make it negative again. Hmm. Anyway, Opisani uh, Suits, so they were described. Suits i my buts hvalit. Khalid, Khalid. So, and we will continue to glorify them, to thank them, praise them, quality to praise. Dobro uh, djetel, so virtue, bo, so this is the old uh, Slavic form of dla, uh, for hvali uh, vseh dovodit. Virtue brings everyone Hmm. Virtue for praising brings everyone uh, tireless. Ah, tirelessly. That's perfect. Ah, okay. So the writers of history listen to them tirelessly. That would make perfect sense. But that's interesting because bo doesn't mean do in in Russian or in any Slavic for that sentence of the word. Hmm. But that would make more sense, right? This does make more sense if it's do. So virtue uh, to praising. Bo means because. So in Ukrainian, this means something else. I don't know what it means exactly, but I know that it doesn't mean for. Iba, bo, iba. Ah, perfect. Oh, guys, you guys are so smart. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, next one. Uh, v, so in. Uh, Cello. Hmm. 
Chelavi, no, it's not Chelaviek, right? Chletech, Chlesnisol. So this is sense, chist, chist, not dirty, right? Clean, vishich, porodi, porodi, like to give birth in all things. No, pizza. This is not ultra Slavonic. This is um, <laughs> old, very so so late old East Slavic, as in late old East Slavic mixed with old church. No, with modern early modern church Slavonic. This is a mix of everything, but this is from the seventeenth century. So it's very complicated. <laughs> he mixes a lot of like early or or late or early modern russian with uh church slavonic like he mixes them all the time sometimes you use like brada right like beard and sometimes barada and different forms so i don't know what this means um chist vieshech so give birth chist clean in human meaning that's clear and things will give birth Ah, nice. In human meaning, it's clear in things will give birth. Nice. So it is Chelovie. Ah, Chelovie Tsech. Tsech. Hmm. Zvier. So creature. Monster sometimes. So the mo the creature of the centaur. Centaur. Sozdano. Uh, so, so uh, Given or cre given life. Životno. Ot. Tvari. So tvar in Croatian, but only in Croatian, I believe, means material or sub, like something that is created out of something. But uh, like, um, not substance. How would you call that in English? Like a uh, material, something like that. Look up the correct English word for that. Tvar. But I'm pretty sure we changed the meaning. Matter. There you go. Substance. Yeah. Would actually exist in Proto Slavic, but it means Tvar. Yeah, so Tvar in Russian means creature. Interesting, like Tvarit. Yeah. Tvoriti. Mm -hmm. uh, creature Tvorca. Tvorca od Tvorca. So that's the genitive of Tvorac. So that would be the creator, right? Tvarc in Polish is face. Tvarts in Polish is face. No way. No way. That's interesting. Tvarts. Tvarts. Face. Comes from Tvar. The same, yeah. Interesting. Slo oh, it also means face in Slovak. Hmm. 50 years later, design group was in the room. Everything was mixed, exactly. As Sergei put it perfectly. So he uses a lot of different styles. Sometimes it's very formal, sometimes it's not as formal, but anyway. Slavi vsyak uhotna. Uhotna with like uh, with pleasure, right? Slavi like uh, to praise, slaviti, celebrate every um, with pleasure. To celebrate probably the creation, right? Tfash. Ah, tfash. Nice. Tfash. So, novo e lieta. So, uh, lieto isn't only uh, summer, but it's also year. In this case, it's probably year, right? The new year. Indict. Indict. Od tvari tvorca slavi vsiak ochotna. Maybe from every creature shall agree, creator of pleasure. That would make sense. Tvari tvorca. So, all of the creations of the creator are celebrated. Slavi. But I wouldn't say that Slavi would be like greeted. Slaviti, right? <laughs> Polish je makes miracles. <laughs> that letter is amazing, dude. Indik. Uh, indikt. Indikt. So indikt is like a period. It's like a period of 15 years uh, in which they used to like date documents, medieval documents. So the new year, new period. Obriash, <laughs> Obriash, uh which is uh 
that's obriashishi, right? It's like to find a, a, a new find. A, a new period will be found if v niebie, so in the sky, po smierci, in the sky or in, in heaven with po, after death, obtain. Zdieshich, mm. zdieshich, it's, I thought that was very informal, zdiesh, like here, right? Zdieshich, like local, probably? Nie zal cheshi. I have no clue what this means. Can also be ambier nyotsa, as in rotate change. Ah, like vier nyotsa, ambier nyotsa. Hmm. I don't know what this means. Like this last part. The new year, new period, new period starts, finds, rotates, changes. In sky after death, local, not Vzal Cheshi Vzat take Vzal Cheshi Vzal. So this is a Lia, right? Vzal Cheshi. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, this happens when you read old texts. Complicated stuff. I have no clue, guys. I really don't know. <laughs> in New Year, you will get indict. In heavens, after death, you won't miss. New century, you will obtain. In heaven, after death, and this one, you will not want. I don't know. I really don't know. Oh my god. Alchesh. Alkats. Alchesh. That would be. That's second palatalization, right? Ah, to wish something, to hope for something. Hmm. Interesting. Well, guys, I think that's gonna be it, because uh, actually the stream is for been streaming for like an hour and something. I thought it would be way shorter, um, but yeah, that's it. Six pages. Um, I would love to continue this like some other other time. Let's do one more. Uh, hmm. Oh no, this is <laughs> oh, this is gonna be hard. Uh, do you guys want to do one more or if so, let's do one more and then, uh, and then we'll bounce. Okay. Kako, right? The letter K. Oh, yo, <laughs> this is going to be hard. Dude, if you have like a more modern version, please let me know because I didn't find anything. Like I've I don't have any sources for this. Okay, this is a lot of stuff. So Keith, right? Well, this is uh still used in Russian. Then we have Kiparis. This has to be Greek. Kiparis. Mm, let's check. Yes, it comes from ancient Greek, from Kyparisos. It means Cyprus, which is a, a tree, a type of tree. Interesting. This word hasn't changed in Russian. Really? You still use it? Oh, wow. So this is klobuk. Kl so this is the, the helmet, right? Type of, uh, or wait, or is that the horse? Uh, wait, klobuk. Klobuk? It's a monastic headgear. It comes from Turkic. No way. 
comes from a Turkic language. I didn't know that. Interesting. So, uh, so we have kal a kalpak, like a k, or is it a k kalpak? Interesting. Uh, kushin. In <laughs> Kushin. Kushin actually means a pillow in uh, Dalmatian dialect, so that's kind of funny. But kush, uh, kushin, like uh, <laughs> kushin, like a kushin. Hmm. Kush. This is not a T, right? This is a kushin. Jug, patriarch, nacit pili, klubok, klubok, mm -hmm. jug. So we have kokosh. So this is the same in uh, uh, South Slavic languages. Kokosh, right? Creation does it. Kuvshin. Ah, kuvshin. Interesting. Kony. So uh, during this period, kony um, was that is a Slavic word, right? I think that loshets is Turkic. Maybe I'm wrong. No, it's Turkic. Alasha comes from, yeah, Tatar, Alasha, pack horse. Yeah, so, but during this period, Konya was still referred to, like a horse was still referred to as a Konya. I think only male horses are referred to as Konya in modern Russian, or like the horse of a, of a warrior of a knight, right? Karabel, which is a boat. Karova, which is a cow, same thing. So kopie, so this, I remember looking this up and asking about it. So this is actually, it's not just a normal spear, right? It's a bear spear, like those big ones uh, that you use to fight bears with and boars, not use, but used to. Uh, they're incredibly long and thick, uh, very strong spears. Kalesnitsa, uh, so this is a sleigh. Kriechet. Like Kriechets? Kriechet. Like an eagle? Kriechet. Proto Indo European. Gear Falcon. Falco Rusticolus. Interesting. Okay, so now we have kluge, which is key, same thing. Uh, kolokol, kolokol, which is a bell, and that would be it, I think. Kabula for female. Hmm. Oi, oi. Kako, kto, hoshchet. So how anyone, someone wants. Vidom by looking or si poznati by looking himself reflects it probably recognize found it <gasps> no way so v pierwych vieščej si so the first things these budeš to you will be that pisati you will first write these things Kiti, but I think many parts of it are speculative. If you have a link, just put it in chat if that's possible. Kiti, so whales are suits, or are in Mariach, so in, in the seas. Uh, kiparis, oh, that's the, the tree, right? Kiparis, kiparis na sushi, ah, na sushi, ah, so these are on the land. These are in the sea and these are not kopno, right? These are on the uh, on the land. Yuni otvierzai. 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 I don't know what it means. Raspaka. Ah, that's great. Open. Nice. 
So um, a young one open, frazum, so in, in your mind, in your boža razum, like a boža kak se to kaže na engleskom, uh, razum, like your state of mind, uh, no, no, not knowledge, razum, uh, English, 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 uh, reason, mind, mm. uh, razum, razum, tvoja uši. Uši. Like ears? Your ears? Mind in general. Uši. <laughs> Uši are also these little animals, right? That drink your blood. <laughs> so, in your mind, your ears. Hmm. Vkaljes. Nicu. Sjać. Sit down in a sleigh. Kopijem. Fight with this bear spear. Kop konjem prijezaj. Ah, prije. So come or come with the horse. Visit us or prijezaj. Prijezaj to come to us, right? Uh, awesome. Thank you, Aza. I will. I'll look it up. Vši drink blood. Yeah, exactly. Ush. Ah, yeah. In Russian, it's vši. Ven u. Mm -hmm. In Croatian, it's u. Ushi. So, uh, Ključem with keys instrumental or Otto Plies Otto Otto Prisia with keys Otto Prisia. I have no clue what this means. Otto Prutsa Otto Prutsa to unlock. Ah, to unlock. Hmm. To unlock with the keys, karabel na vodje, so a boat on the water, a v domu karava, <laughs> and at home there's a cow. Interesting, right? About theology, and then you talk about <laughs> there's a boat in the water, and at home there's a cow. I kokos uh, v trebu, so uh, and you also need a, um, uh, a chicken. I ljudjem zdarova, so and, and to humans. And, and people will be healthy and, and happy, right? Unlock, yeah, unlock yourself. Odloži, no, odloži prisno. Uh, prisno means forever, right? Prisno vjeko vjekova, I believe. Prisno. Forever, yeah, exactly. Prisno, forever. Uh, odloži, so put away forever. Četi. Nie dosugi. <laughs> I have no clue. Tšeti. 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 Nie dosugi. Hmm. Kolo kol. Prisno. Postajana. Da, 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 da. Vsegda. Odloži vsegda. Tšeti. Nie dosugi. Kolo kol, slušaj, listen to the bells, tvori, create v njebje drugi, drugi. So, create in v njebje, in the sky, friends, drug, or different, another, drugi, other. Dru oh, it's drugi, so that's friends, tvori v njebje drugi. Hmm, I just don't know what this is. Hmm. plural would be druze. Druze, I think. Yeah. Drugi can also mean like different, right? Another. Cheta is something unuseful. The palatalization sort of leaves you with something different. Hmm. Drugi. But um, I don't know if drug in Old Church Slavonic already meant friend. I think it did, right? You have priatel, priatel. I don't know if drug already meant fl friend in Old Church Slavonic. Let me check. Uh, Pro Slavic. No, it didn't. 
in no in Proto Slavic it meant other, right? Oh, in Ultra Slavonic it does. So druge moj ot. What is it? Druge moj ot sre slishave siu reče. Makes sense. So it was friend then. Wait, let me let me see the conjugations. That would be drugi druzje. Nominative plural. Nominative plural would be dr o u z e, but the z faded, so that and the z could become a g. Second palatalization, right? This is also meaning something unuseful and bothering. Mm -hmm. mm, van oh, vanity. Interesting. Okay, guys, I think this is going to be it, though, <laughs> because I um, also still have uh, some stuff, other stuff to do. But there's still quite a lot of things left. There's actually a few people I want to thank. I obviously want to thank the group of people. Like, you know who you are, who you helped me out with Russian. And uh, the group that helps me out with all of my questions. Um, two close Greek friends who help me out with a lot of Greek stuff. Uh, I want to thank you guys for helping me out. Because, again, I'm not a Russian native. Um, I only speak one Slavic language. So this is uh, <laughs> very interesting. Um, if there are any suggestions or anything, just write it down. Uh, thank you so much. I'm proud of you all. And uh, thank you for coming. It really means a lot. Cheers. Увидимся.